I got her. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag young gang. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> hi there, honey. How you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to learn about the Bible today? I am ready for you to teach me all about the Bible. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. Okay, well. And then I'll it- teach you about it when you're done. Oh, oh, is that how we're doing it now? That's how we've always done it, honey. What? Uh Uh-huh. I have perfect knowledge of the Bible. Uh Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you don't remember, last time, uh, Ezra had decided to rehash all of the Israelite history and remind people how shit they've been to God. Uh, And he covers all the laws that they should have been following but aren't, again, because they're shit. They also forgave all the debts for the debt slaves, but, you know, fuck the chattel slaves, their property. So, you know, <laughs> they don't get forgiven at all. Right. Right. Uh, now, on to today, to what we're learning today. Nihi uh, decides to do some religious reforms as he governs for 11 years. But at the end of that time, he returns to King Artie. Um, but Nihi ends up coming back at mm-hmm. some point. We don't know exactly how far uh, or how long he was gone for. But apparently people had taken to defecating on the temple. And what? they just shit-talked God for a, lo- uh, oh, a long time. Uh, he learned learned that the storerooms were trashed and one storeroom was used as an orgy pit and another one was an apartment. Uh, Tobiah, the tenant of the apartment storeroom, uh, was, was living in there. He was kind of trashy. You know, he just let it all hang out all the time. Anyways, Nihi had all of the orgy people thrown out and Tobiah was evicted because fuck him. Nihi uh, then had to have everything purified with the blood ritual. You know, that's where they slaughter something and then they spread blood all over the place. Apparently that cleans it somehow. Okay. Not sure how that works, but I feel like I always have to clean up blood. Blood is never the thing that I use to clean. I'm just saying. Yeah, but I feel like you'd have to, if you use blood to do cleansing, then you have to clean up after it because you yeah. can't just leave it. Um, then it's not really cleansing anything. It's just making shit dirty. Yeah, can you imagine how fucking crazy it must be walking into a room? It's like, it's cleansed. There's blood everywhere, man. <laughs> What the fuck do you mean it's cleansed? Stinks. What do you mean? It's cleansed for God. Is God a fucking wild boar? No, he's a vampire. <laughs> he's a vampire. That's right. Um, also, Nihi was totally disgusted by the temple defecation that had happened. Just, you know, everybody just went in there and shat on God. Uh, the tithes were not happening, so the temple was poor as shit. And so Nihi uh, had bitched at the officials for not mandating the voluntary tithes. Hmm. Uh, people uh, were all also fucking on the Sabbath as well as selling food. And, you know, the, both of those things are not not good. Immigrants uh, were able to sell shit on the Sabbath, which is a big no-no because, you know, racist things. The gates of Jerusalem were mandated to be closed so that no more fucking around can happen on Sunday. And people were race mixing and speaking foreign languages. He mm. rebuked, beat, and pulled the hair of people that couldn't speak Hebrew, screaming, We only speak Hebrew in these parts! <laughs> He stole foreigner shit from the priests and uh, then set them straight with their duties. I'm guessing with like a whip or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Next, there was Trump's wall dedication. Uh, Everybody attended and there were like 20 million people there to watch the gates and the wall get purified with animal blood. Uh, Priests got so drunk they climbed up the wall, flashed everyone their circumcised cocks. Uh, People (laughs) were flooding the wall and twerking on it. What? This is not what we discussed. What? Yeah, no. I I heard all this. You said it. I no, I didn't say anything about dick flashing or twerking. Nihi then put acapella groups all over the temple to keep the party going. I, I, I that's yeah. how to keep a party going, man. Acapella. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can you imagine an acapella group singing amongst like just rivers of blood everywhere? That would be weird. Uh, the reason why there was uh, rivers of blood everywhere is that they, the Israelites offered up sacrifices, like a lot of sacrifice. Like there were so many sacrifices. We don't even know how many fucking cattle they killed that day. Like yeah, it was just one right after another. Sometimes, a lot of times they'll tell us, you know, when they're having like mass sacrifices for festivals and shit, they'll tell us how many, but this time they didn't, did they? Yeah, well, so it I mean, could be not a lot. We I mean, don't know. It, you know, it kind of goes along with their lax nature at this very last bit here because, like, they're so lax, they just don't even fucking remember how to count. Mm, okay. <clears throat> uh, I, you know, ironically, though, this definitely matches up with the Trump crowd because they can't count neither, you mm. know, because, you know, Trump had, like, what, 40 million people at his inauguration? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> so anyways, they offered up a lot of sacrifices. So they lo- they slaughtered a bunch of livestock. I don't know how they still have livestock. I mean, with the way they slaughter shit. Uh, everyone was happy bathing in animal blood. So they sprayed it on each other. Like they just sprayed the blood. I'm guessing they used like little squirt guns or something. Uh, they replenished the storerooms with the tithes. They were for- they forced everyone to voluntarily give over. Uh, well, was that I, I forget the the term that we use here in the South. Volun told uh, told volun told. Yeah, that's it. Volun told. <laughs> they were volun told to, to give up their tithes. Mm-hmm. Um, the Levites uh, even scraped a bit off the top for them uh, for them themselves. Uh, then they read the uh, the Moses laws again just for shits and giggles, I guess. And when the people heard the law, they decided to exile all the foreigners and institute a nobody from shithole countries policy. The end of the world as we know it. You took the end of the world. You took a lot of creative liberties with that. Did I? Yeah, you did. We're going to go over the real thing. What? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, listen, the whole blood thing and twerking on the wall, that's definitely in there. They were definitely it's still, twerking on the wall. It's not there. Y'all can't see it, but I'm twerking right now. <laughs> in his chair. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to tell him I was in a chair. It was funnier. <laughs> What's up, heathens? How How y'all doing? doing? Uh, So, apparently, I got some things wrong. Yeah. I refuse to believe that the priest didn't get so drunk they climbed up on the wall and, like, flashed everybody. Woo! God! (laughs) I mean, you can refuse to believe whatever you want to to refuse to believe. Okay. It's up to you. All right. But, it. I mean, when I read this, it's not there. (laughs) So everybody will understand why I thought it was there, I'm sure. <laughs> Are you ready to start? Mm-hmm. Okay, so like after the last time um Nehemiah went back to uh well he he governed Israel for eleven years after, right? right? And then he in 432 BCE, that was the end of his appointment term. Okay. Okay. He went back to Susa to King Artaxerxes and was there for a while. We have no idea how long, um, but he was there. And then he gets permission to return to, um, Nehemiah gets permission to return to Judah. And when he comes back, he does not like what he finds. Okay. So we're going to go through some of that. We're going to be starting. I know it's going to be a little weird. We're going to be starting in Nehemiah 13. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what he finds when he comes back. And then we're going to shift to uh, Nehemiah 12 and discuss the wall dedication. <laughs> okay. Yes. But first we have to talk about what happened when he got back. He was not okay. pleased. Okay. No, he was pissed. Yeah. And we don't know exactly when this time, ta- like exactly what time we're in right now. Estimated about 425 BCE, mm-hmm. but there, there's not an actual known documented time for this. Okay. Okay. So we're, we're going to be starting Nehemiah 13, 4. Okay. All right. Before this, Eliashib, the priest had been put in charge of the storerooms of the house of our God. He was closely associated with Tobiah and he had provided him with a large room formerly used to store the grain offering, uh, grain offerings and incense and temple articles, and also the tithes of grain, new wine and olive oil prescribed for the Levites, musicians and gatekeepers, as well as the contributions for the priests. But while all this was going on, I was not in Jerusalem, I being Nehemiah, right? Mm -hmm. For the 32nd year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, um, I had returned to the king. Some time later, I asked his permission and came back to Jerusalem. Here I learned about the evil thing Eliashib had done in providing Tobiah a room in the courts of the house of God. So it was evil that he like moved out some storage area to make a room for this guy, right? That's evil. It was evil, okay? I was greatly displeased and threw all Tobiah's household go- goods out of the room. I gave orders to purify the rooms and then I put back into them the equipment of the house of God with the grain offerings and the incense. Sense, I so. can just see Nehemiah going through there and being like, get your shit out of here. Get this couch out of here. What the fuck is this? A George Foreman? Fuck you. 
<laughs> and Tobiah is just like, the fuck? What is he doing to my house? <laughs> I paid rent here. I have right. <laughs> but these rooms were specifically dedicated as storerooms in the temple. So, mm -hmm. it, I mean, technically, based on how their law and rule and everything is, these were dedicated for that. So it was wrong that they had done that. I wonder if maybe they had to turn one of the storerooms into an apartment because they weren't getting the tides that they needed. And so they had to, like, try to make it up. Well, it doesn't say that they charge him. They just, he gave, somebody needed a place to live and they gave him a place to live. On the surface, this does not seem like a bad thing. No. Like, hey, this room is just full of all this shit. What if we move this stuff into a different room and let this dude stay here so he has a place to sleep? Yeah, um, but as we all know, God yeah. can't find his shit if it's moved. Yeah, so it has to be in the exact spot, so. But also, he's um, omniscient, so. <laughs> So anyway, Nehemiah was very upset with that. Um, also, uh, I learned that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them and that all the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. So like there were supposed to be musicians and priests and stuff at the temple doing services. They left and went back to their homes and fields instead of staying there and doing what they had been assigned. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because Nehemiah wasn't there. And I mean, I don't know who was put in charge while Nehemiah was gone, but whoever it was did not do their job. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I rebuked the officials and asked them, why is the house of God neglected? Then I called them together and stationed them at their post. So now they're back at work. Uh, well, that kind of work before <laughs> no they were more working. teleworking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in those days, I saw the people in Judah treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in grain and loading it on donkeys together with the wine, grapes, figs, and all the other kinds of loads. Hmm. And they were bringing... <laughs> <laughs> all the other kinds of loads. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they were bringing all this into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore, I warned them against selling food on that day. People from Tyre who lived in Jerusalem were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise and selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah. I rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, what is this wicked thing you are doing, desecrating the Sabbath day? Didn't your ancestors do the same thing so that our God brought all this calamity on us and on this city? Now you are stirring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath. When the evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I ordered the doors be shut and not opened until the Sabbath was over. I stationed some of my own men at the gates so that no load could be brought in on the Sabbath day. So he shut down the city. Yeah. No loads on the Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> no loads will be expended on the Sabbath. <laughs> Once or twice, the merchants and sellers of all kinds of goods spent the night outside Jerusalem. But I warned them and said, why do you spend the night by the wall? If you do this again, I will arrest you. From that time on, they no longer came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites to purify themselves and go guard the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. Okay. Okay. And this is this is something I find interesting. He does this multiple times. Remember me for this also, my God, and show mercy to me according to your great love. So he he says this multiple times when he talks about stuff that he's doing that's super holy and mm -hmm. to make reformations and clean up Judah according to God. Mm -hmm. He wants credit. Like he he asks God specifically, remember that I did this. I just think it's interesting. Don't fuck me up and she yell afterwards, okay? I just, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to follow the laws here, sir. Yeah. <laughs> So another thing he found when he got back. Moreover, in those days, I saw men of Judah who had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod or the language of one of the other peoples and did not know how to speak the language of Judah. I rebuked them and called curses down on them. I beat some of the men and pulled out their hair. I made them take an oath in God's name and said, you are not to give your daughters in marriage to their sons, nor are you to take their daughters in marriage for your sons or for yourselves. Was it not because of marriages like these that Solomon, king of Israel, sinned. Among the many nations, there was no king like him. He was loved by his God, and God made him king over all Israel. But even he was led into sin by foreign women. We must hear now that you too are doing all this terrible wickedness and are being unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women. One of the sons of Joyada, son of uh, Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat, the Horonite. I 
and I drove him away from me. Remember them, my God, because they defiled the priestly office and the covenant of the priesthood of the Levites. So I purified the priests and the Levites of everything foreign and assigned them duties, each to his own task. I also made provision for contributions of wood at designated times and for the first fruits. Remember me with favor, my God. <laughs> so very upset about foreign women. Yeah. And then children who speak a different language. That's also a big time no-no. They must speak the language of Judah. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, this this has a lot of energy that's a ki- that is similar to, we only speak American here. <laughs> Why do I have to press one for English? <laughs> that always annoyed me. Not having to press one for English, but people complaining about that. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that pretty much sums up what he found, what Nehemiah found when he came back, right? Okay. And what he did about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we still have to dedicate the wall, right? Right. So let's talk about that. You ready? We're going to start Nehemiah 12, 27. This is where the twerking and the dicks come out. (laughs) And they have approximated this to be about the same time period, 425 BCE. But again, no um, actual confirmation of any, you know, dates from anything external. They're not actually sure when this happened. They're guessing. Right. At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they lived and where they, and, and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs of thanksgiving and with the music of cymbals, harps, and lyres. The musicians were also brought together from the region around Jerusalem, from the villages of uh, Netophath, Netophathites. Sure. Netophathites? Uh, fat- Fath, fat, P, P-A-T-H-I-T-E, fatites, <laughs> neophatites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or net, neto fatites. Anyway, from Beth Gilgal and from the area of Giba and Asmaveth, for the musicians had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. Okay. So mm-hmm. they brought all the musicians in. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, ceremonially, they purified the people and the gates and the wall. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall. I also assigned two large choirs to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right toward the dung gate, Hoshahiah, Hoshahiah, and half of the leaders of Judah followed them along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshalem, Judah, Benjamin, she- uh, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, as well as some priests with trumpets and also Zechariah, son of Jonathan, the son of she- Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of uh, Mike. Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his associates. Uh, Shemaiah, Shemaiah, Azarel, Mila, Mila, Lai, Gilalai, Mai, Nethanel, Judah, and Hanani. Fuck. <laughs> with musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra, uh, the teacher of law, led the procession. At the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David on the ascent to the wall and passed above the site of David's palace to the water gate on the east. The second choir proceeded in the opposite direction. I followed them on top of the wall together with half of the people past the tower of the ovens to the broad wall over the gate of Ephraim, the uh, Jesh- Jeshana gate, the fish gate, the tower of Hananel, the Tower of Hundred, as far as the Sheep Gate. At the Gate of the Guard, they stopped. So that was the path. In case anybody wanted to, you know, you, since you know how the gates all laid out and everything, you can follow where they were going. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows. Not nobody. Somebody knows this, but probably nobody listening to this. <laughs> okay. Uh, two choirs that gave thanks then took their places in the house of God. So did I, together with half the officials as well as the priests. Eliakim, Messiah, Min, Miniamim, Min, Miniamim, Micaiah, Elionai, Zechariah, and Hananiah with their trumpets. Also, Messiah, Shemaiah, uh, Elizar, Uzi, Ja. Jahananan, Malkijah, Elam, and Ezer. The choir sang under the direction of Jezraiah. Oh, that's very important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on that day, they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. So they were very happy. They (sighs) sacrificed a bunch of shit and sang a bunch of songs and played a bunch of music. Turn down your fucking shit. (laughs) 
<laughs> they had a music festival. <laughs> yeah, but if you can hear it from three towns away, you're partying way too hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were dedicating the wall. It was very important stuff. They wanted to make sure God could hear. You know, I feel like if, if Trump had actually done whatever he said he was going to do with his fucking wall, that's what would have happened. Yeah, you think? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they've sung, they've, they've purified, they've offered sacrifices, and now all of Judah brought in the tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil into the storerooms. At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for their contributions. Uh, first, first fruits and tithes. From the fields around the towns, they were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by law for the priests and the Levites, for Judah was pleased with the ministering of priests and Levites. I put Shemaliah, sh sorry, I'm so sorry, Shelemiah, because that matters, <laughs> the priest, Zadok the scribe, and a Levite named Pedaiah in charge of the storerooms and made Hanan, son of Zechur, the son of Mataniah, their assistant, because they were considered trustworthy. They were made responsible for distributing the supplies to their fellow Levites. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification, as did all the musicians and gatekeepers, according to the commands of David and his son Solomon. For long ago, in the days of David and Asaph, there had been directors for the musicians and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God. So in the days of Zerubbabel and Nehemiah, all Israel contributed the daily portions for the musicians and the gatekeepers. They also set aside the portion for the other Levites, and the Levites set aside the portion for the descendants of Aaron. Mm -hmm. Remember me for this, my God, and do not blot out what I have so faithfully done for the house of my God and its services. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I did this thing. Give me a pat on the back. Yeah, I want a cookie. God, yeah. can I have a cookie? <laughs> I mean, we can go get some cookies. Yeah, we got them downstairs. Do we? <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we still have a few cookies down there. Oh, okay. So let's see. Reading of the law. All right. So on that day, after they did all of this, the purifying, the sacrifices, the songs, the tithes, the putting all the shit in the storerooms and everything else. Um, then they sat down. And on that day, the book of Moses was read aloud in the hearing of the people. And there it was found written, which they should have already known this, that no Ammonite or Moabite should ever be admitted into the assembly of God because they had not met the Israelites with food and water, but had hired Balaam to care to call a curse down on them. So this was when the Israelites were um, traveling from out of Egypt, right? Right. To the Holy Land. That's when this happened. They're discussing what happened at that time. They weren't met with food. They weren't welcomed. Um, they These people called curses upon them. So they're not allowed to welcome any Ammonite or Moabite into their families or into the community. Right. Or just in the town at all. Right. Okay. Um, so, so let's see. So when people heard this law, they excluded from Israel all who were f of foreign descent. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this sounds very familiar to the, the Trump thing. <laughs> I don't know why you always bring it back to Trump. Well, because this entire situation may, like just reeks of like everything that, um you know, Trump had kind of uh, talked anti, about his four anti years. Anti-foreign people. Well, uh, anti-foreign people really heavily focused on a wall. And if he had actually done whatever he wanted to do with the wall... He would have had some kind of fucking party and all of his hillbilly fans would have, you know, probably whipped their dicks out. <laughs> So you'll see that in that reading there were there was no twerking and there was no dick flashing. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. Could it have happened? I guess. Did it happen? We don't know. It didn't say so. <laughs> it doesn't say there wasn't dick flashing. It doesn't say there wasn't. You're right. <laughs> so that's all for today's reading. All right. And kind of a surprise to us is it might be it was a surprise to us as I was going through this and it might be a surprise to you all that in time chronologically mm -hmm. is the end of the Old Testament. They they ended it with a party on a wall. Awesome. They ended it with a party on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in time, we're at about 425 BCE, right? Okay. So <clears throat> next time we'll be starting the New Testament, which starts with the Gospels. But Well, shit a brick. Yes. But as you all know, um, Jesus, had he been born, would have been born about approximately 400 years later. 
from where we are sitting in time right now. Right. So I feel like, I don't know, the question I asked is what happens during that 400 years, Mm -hmm. right? Because we don't have any biblical writings. Like we don't have anything in canon that's written from that time period. Right. So we essentially stop it for 400 years. Now, this is not the first gap in time we've had in the story, right? Right. But this seems like a fairly significant one. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, I feel like if you have writings from now and earlier, it seems like you would have writings during this time. However, um, this was a it, this this period, this 400 year period between the Old Testament and the New Testament is actually called the intertestamental period. And we know a lot about this period, but not obviously not from the Bible, um, from extra biblical sources. It was a pretty violent time period. There was a lot of um, upheavals, mm-hmm. a lot of political change, um, a lot of, um, you know, people conquering other peoples and moving in and taking people out. And so there was a lot of mixing of culture, including religious belief. Right. Okay. So there were a lot of changes going on at this time. Um, The Greeks um, essentially were shedding their polytheistic ideas Mm -hmm. um, and the beliefs of the Jewish people were challenged. There there was a lot going on. Language and religion um, were changing, blending, all kinds of stuff was going on. Um, And we were moving from, you know, how we kind of were before into the Greco-Roman kind of time period. Right. Okay. Um, And because there was so much change and there was so much, so many things, like, I don't know if it was lost or just infused into the Jewish religion, the Jewish people were really looking for their Messiah. Mm -hmm. Um, They wanted the Messiah to usher in a time of peace and prosperity for them because there was so much violence and stuff happening in that area of the world at this time. Mm -hmm. So that's what they were looking for. Um, I mean, we're not going to go into a lot of the actual history of stuff because that's not our purpose here. Right. But if you want to look into it, um, it's called the intertestamental period. Mm -hmm. And you can look into and learn about all the history of that area, which documented actual history that happened during that time. Right. And um, just keep in mind that um, Jewish beliefs um, in in this time period uh, varied wildly. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's because there's a lot of people out there that are like, well, you know, the Jews were expecting a military messiah to come in and conquer the Romans and all this other stuff. And I mean, true, there were Jews that were expecting that kind of messiah. But during this time period of 400 years of development and influence from outside uh, pagan... And various influences. Right. Not, not, not all the same during that time and not all the same in all the places where Jewish people were. Right. Yeah. And so you, you had a lot of different takes on the Jewish religion and, and a lot of sects. We know some of the sects uh, that were going around at the time because we, we do have evidence of them, but um, w- w- sometimes we only have uh, like just vague references to uh, these sects and these different Jewish beliefs, uh, not only about the Messiah, but uh, about Judaism in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, and th- the sects that we do know about, some of them varied quite wildly from what the Orthodox or the traditional Jewish beliefs were. Sure. One of the other major things that happened during this time period was Hellenization, which really impacted the Jews. They took, uh, one of the things Hellenization did was make Greek a universal language. Mm -hmm. And so they translated all of the Jewish scripture and everything from Hebrew into Greek. Right. right? So that's where you get the Septuagint. Yeah. So you've, so you've got just a a lot of stuff going on that's really impacting um, religious progression during this time and what's, what's going on with the belief system and how, like, like John said, it's not, it's, it, it fractures significantly because of all of these external influences. Right. That's also why it's quite ridiculous to hear apologists say that like there was some kind of proto version of like, I believe it's either Matthew or Luke. I think it might be Matthew that it was originally written in Hebrew, not Greek. That doesn't make a lot of sense because no. of of what uh, KC just said, and that's that, you know, Greek was the universal language. Mm -hmm. Those that would have been writing like the Gospels, they would have learned in pagan schools that were teaching how to write in Greek. Mm -hmm. And so that it makes no sense to say, oh, they wrote in Hebrew first. Yeah, and Hellenization significantly impacted the Jews. Right. Um, So... 
this is, I don't know, it does seem a little silly to say that, but. There's a, the point is, is that there's a lot of syncretization that's going on at this point. And so the Jewish beliefs change uh, in some instances heavily. And so that's what brings us to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, uh, and again, you have to understand that what we're going to be going through is what they say chronologically happened. Mm -hmm. But the Gospels, as I'm sure all of you know, were written uh, at 70 AD and onward. And so these are much later accounts of what supposedly happened early in the first century. Right. And so we're skipping a lot of time here. Yeah. Without without canonical biblical writings. Right. Now, there are other writings that happened. Um, n- nothing that's canon. You mm-hmm. know, there are things that are outside of the canon. Hell, we know there are several other gospels mm-hmm. than what's what's in the Bible. But um, how how we're going to go through the gospels as we do this, since you know, you all know we've done this the Old Testament chronologically, so you don't go book by book, right? And, right. And the the it's it, the story is chronolo- It's chronological by the story, not necessarily by when something was written, right? Mm-hmm. So while we as we go through the New Testament. We're going. It's going to tell the story. So we're telling the story of Jesus, intermixing all of the gospels into that story, right? So we'll be jumping around between the gospels as we tell the story because we're basically we're telling them all in parallel. So mm-hmm. it's pulling it's pulling information from all the gospels into one combined story, right? So it can it, it might be a little it might take a little additional explanation uh, because I'm not sure how they'll address inconsistencies consistencies, or if they will, in the Daily Bible. It'll, it'll be interesting because uh, mm-hmm. the Daily Bible, I don't know if anybody has picked up the Daily Bible, but they've got these little gray blocks where it's got like author's notes and stuff in it. Yeah. And so I'm kind of curious as to what it says in there yeah. about some of the contradictions uh, or, or what they say directly in the text yeah. uh, about the contradictions. So Yeah. So we'll have to see how that all works out. And I'm, I know that John will be more vocal. Vocal. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have much more to say when it comes to the New Testament, especially in the Gospels, because he's um, educated himself significantly in this area. Yeah. Um. So anyway, yeah, Old Testament. So one thing that I will tell you that we are skipping um, from the Old Testament, and and at the end of this, what the the Daily Bible does is they go back to First Chronicles and they go through the um, official records of Israel. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when they say official official records of Israel, this is genealogical record. Okay. Right. So they basically start with Noah's sons and go through the whole history of the old it's it's very long and it's lots of names. There 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 is a little bit of interesting information here and there, like like Caleb's clans. Like it gives the it gives the names of people, but it'll kind of tell you. Well, it actually doesn't tell you with Caleb's clans what happens to them. But with some of these um, groups of people, some of the tribes, some of the clans, it'll tell you a, a little bit about what happened to them. Mm-hmm. Like they had a lot of crops, or they did this, or they moved from this area to this area. <sighs> We're not going to go through that. It's it's nine full chapters of names almost exclusively. And I just, I don't think that that's going to be useful Mm -hmm. um, at all in telling the story. Um, If you'd like to read that, go to First Chronicles, start at chapter one, and you just, to your heart's content, chapter one through chapter nine, First Chronicles, and you can read all of that. Um, They also in the book, in the Daily Bible, do a historical interlude where they talk about this intratestamental period, okay, and what's going on. They talk about Hellenism. Um, we've already kind of given you a idea of that um, mm-hmm. and what happens. They also go through the Apocrypha, which is not in the Bible, so we're skipping that. Um, and we're just going to start out next time with, with Jesus, Jesus the Messiah. Yeah. And his like they're they're gonna try to they're gonna try to read in parallel with the gospels, um, which can be quite difficult. Um, like just a quick for instance is the birth of Jesus. Like when does that happen? Well, it depends on which particular gospel you read. If you read Matthew, it happens in uh, four BCE. Yeah, I'm not sure that they'll highlight those things, but we'll see as we go along. Right. So anyway, that's what's up next. We finished the Old Testament, y'all. After what are we five years? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know. I can't remember when we started this. It was like 2017 or something, I wasn't it? I think we started in 2017. Yeah. So, I mean, finally finished the Old Testament. I can say that I have read the Old Testament completely, well, basically complete. at least the story. Like, I feel like the Old Testament has a lot of fluff in it. Like there's a lot of just extra stuff that is not pertinent to the actual story of the Old Testament. Yeah. Another thing that we skipped way early on was just chapters and chapters and chapters and chapters of Proverbs. Songs of praise, songs of lament, songs of all this. uh, We skipped all because it doesn't, it, it, it didn't give you the story. Now there is some stuff in there that people that religious people use, mm-hmm. um, especially I've heard a lot of, from the NIFB. Right. They, they use proverbs, I think, somewhat, but we skipped over. Yeah, those. and we skipped over some some of Psalms. Although we will probably oh, I think that's what I meant with Psalms. Is that well, what I was talking about? Well, Psal- Psalms and Proverbs. Okay, I believe. But um, you know, we'll we'll probably touch on some important ones when we get to the New Testament mm-hmm. because. Now, uh, this is this is going to be the time when I'm going to have to do a lot of pre-research mm-hmm. before we record a podcast because um, there's there's a lot of references in the new in the gospels back to like psalms and things like that. So we'll co- when it becomes pertinent to the story, we'll cover like the psalm mm-hmm. that it, that is important to it. Sure, ones that are pertinent. Yeah, right. Because if, if there's uh, one thing about the gospels that everybody should know on the outset is that it's definitely generated using Using the Old Testament, specifically the Septuagint version of mm-hmm. the Old Testament. So, so surprise. Yeah. <laughs> End of the Old Testament. We should have like, should we do a party where we twerk and I uh, take my dick out? And we climb up on walls. Yeah. I mean, as long as you stay in the house. Just stay in the house. I'd, I mean, I can't really to- climb the walls in the house though. Okay. Also, I don't want to damage the walls here. Yeah. I mean, I mean you had... can't take your dick out in public. So if you want to do celebrate somehow, just close the blinds and do whatever. Woo! Woo! Shake my dick. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for the Old Testament. Um, uh, Casey, I so appreciate, you know, you being here to educate me (laughs) after literally reading it out and me just totally not getting it. (laughs) I mean, I think you got it, but the summaries are definitely the highlight of the show. Um, We will continue with the summaries as far as I understand. Yeah. Uh, We will be continuing with the beginning summaries that uh, John so... um, Eloquently eloquently and creatively <laughs> comes up with. He's got such a great imagination. Um, so we'll continue with that um, because I mean, I feel like that's probably one of y'all's favorite parts, but it is one of my favorite parts. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sounds awesome. Well, uh, heathens, uh, if you will, please go down below, leave us a comment with what you thought about either the Old Testament in general or this particular uh, part of, of the Old Testament. Let us know down below in the comments and hey while you're down there why don't you smash that like button because that helps get uh you know it helps with the algorithm and also subscribe if you want to hear more podcasts like this and don't forget to stand up and use your voice bye heathens bye y'all